Hello and welcome to the next episode, episode 43 of the No Office podcast. Uh, we've had a break, but now we're coming back and we'll be coming um, on a like more looser cadence over the next months. But we will be recording a, a podcast, so stay subscribed to No Office podcast and make sure that uh, to recommend it to your friends. And this episode already is a very special one. It's, uh, as you would paraphrase David Letterman, my next guest needs no introduction because he's David Allen of the Getting Things Done fame and um, the David Allen, the author of the book, the author of the movement. Um, and uh, I have a pleasure of, of speaking to him. Uh, I met him um, several times in, in my life and uh, re most recently on the GTD Summit, so on a, on a conference for geeks, uh, getting things done geeks like myself in Amsterdam in 2019, so right before the pandemic. Uh, so then we saw each other, it was a blast, we've had a blast. Uh, I met lots of like-minded people, many Nosby users who use Nosby to implement getting things done. And um, with that, um, uh, now, after the pandemic, uh, I, I convinced David to... Uh, to uh, talk to him and uh, interview him for this show to just get an update of what he still thinks what's in what's what's going on with GTD how uh, GTD um, evolved how it kind of the pandemic forced people to use GTD more and to really get organized and also we talked about holacracy uh, which is a very interesting subject of making the companies uh, self-manage, um, which is something I've been trying to do in my company. So David is challenging me. He's asking, uh, I mean, I'm trying to ask questions, but he's actually asking me to go like, one step further. So it's a very interesting conversation. I hope you'll enjoy it and you'll love it. Um, without much further ado, here's uh, David Allen of Getting Things Done. So, David, thanks for agreeing to talk to you. As as you, as you mentioned, uh, we have seen each other at the GTD Summit in Amsterdam three years ago in 2019, so right before the pandemic. It feels like yeah. a decade ago. God, what happened to those three years? Jeez. You know? Right? I mean... Um, <laughs> so, so, so after this decade of three years, uh, tell me, what, what, what do you think is like the main... Um, do you see a change in the world of business, in the world of getting things done because of the pandemic, because of the, the, the no, how the world happened? It just it, it just sped some things up in terms of how many people needed to manage themselves better. Okay. Okay. So you so you think that the, just people realize that they need to get stuff done better? Well, you know, uh, it, it undid a lot of the structures that allowed them to be comfortable that in that structure, they could be told what to do. Or they, you know, they could go to the office and then say, okay, I'm in the office, therefore I do these kinds of things. If they don't have an office, you know, back to the whole idea of hybrid, you know, like, okay, if you're not in the office, you know, how do you manage uh, office level work, you mm -hmm. know, when you're not in an office? And for a lot of people, that was quite stressful because they weren't used to that. I mean, come on, any any salesperson or consultant has has lived a hybrid world for years exactly. of their career, right? So uh, it's not a new event. It's just new about how many people have to then deal with that. Yeah, totally. And um, I remember one of the things that, you know, when I read your book for the first time uh, many, many years ago, um, uh, so... Uh, the, the 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 kind of new thing that I learned was then um, you know uh, I mean I learned many new things in getting things done but one of the most striking thing was the context uh, concept right that you all work in different contexts and there is the context at home there's the context at office <laughs> in the pandemic world there, <laughs> these contexts are very intertwined yeah yeah you got to deal yeah you got to deal with this and. Uh, um, I think uh, for me, for example, the surprising thing was when I was talking to business, uh, you know, to entrepreneurs, to fellow entrepreneurs, um, what was their surprise when the pandemic hit and all that stuff is like, they were surprised that people are actually, when being forced to juggle it all, you know, at home and everything, they're actually working. 
I mean, I mean, you know, uh, when people are forced, you know, with stress, they have to just, you know, figure it out. And and many people did. Like, and I think um, it was surprising for uh, yeah for many folks, for many like, entrepreneurs, that their people can actually cope with that and they can work pretty effectively, even when they don't have to go to the office every day. As long as they have keys for managing themselves mm -hmm. in terms of their co their commitments, and you know. Michael, given what I teach, you should be able to, you want a, a time for kids? Great. Go do kids. Just don't mm -hmm. be bothered by the rest of your world. Time to do work? Fine. Just don't be bothered by the rest of your world. So how do you arrange your life so that whatever you're focused on is not distracted by the rest of your world? Well, you got to manage the rest of your world so that some part of you can put that to bed. But again, that's the essence of GTD has been from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, again, um, I still remember one uh, in, uh, in my first seminar with you when I when we met for the first time. I, I still remember that uh, uh, when you said that um, uh, that uh, uh, when you do your weekly review, so you think then, and then you know you'll know that um, next week you'll think again, but in the meantime you'll be just executing. So uh, <laughs> to me, uh, this kind of um, yeah, idea was kind of foreign. Like you think once and you prepare everything and then you have the confidence to trust that you're going to think again in a week. <laughs> Can you just, you know, elaborate on that? <laughs> no, you said it well, you know, that's it. If you're not thinking once a week, you're trying to think all the time, but not finishing it. So I go, you know, why waste your time trying to think about what you ought to be that ought to be thinking about how you ought to be thinking about what you ought to be thinking about how you ought to be thinking about 24 seven stop mm -hmm. once a week, finish that process so that some part of you could then just trust your intuitive strategic choices about what you do. So in this inter in, in this uh, chat, I, I want to discuss uh, like more kind of uh, also this kind of concept of how to you know, teach or introduce GTD in a team, you know, how to work together. And one of the things that we uh, did uh, uh, in my company is that on every Friday, we we make weekly review kind of mandatory, but I mean, not really mandatory because you cannot force anyone to do anything, but, you know, we encourage people on Fridays to to to, to spend the time on, on a weekly review. And uh, we've had, uh, you know, mixed uh, successes with that. Not everyone is doing that. Um, but um, have you, I mean, have you seen how leaders have tried to introduce weekly review to their teams or have you seen them struggling with that? Or have, do you have any tips, you know, for me and for other you know, entrepreneurs, how to introduce weekly review to the team? Best example I had was a very, very senior guy at Hewlett Packard HP, big GTD fan. And once a week when he had a weekly team meeting, he put up his brain you know, actually the brain he used, the sort of mind mapping. He mm -hmm. said, by the way, guys, here's my world right now. Here's what has my attention. Here's what I'm doing. And he essentially did a weekly review, at least professionally, in terms of all of his people. And he said, so you'll know why I'm making the decisions I'm making. Uh-huh. Right? He didn't have to do anything else other than that. And they, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> modeling is the best educational form you can do. So if you do that, if Michael, if you showed up and said, hey guys, let me show you my weekly review, da -da 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 -da, at least what you're willing to share with them. Yeah. And here's how I'm doing that. If they don't, then they can do it or not do it. But I guarantee you, they'll feel a little embarrassed if they're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have this... Um... Uh, we have this thing that on, on our uh, company Slack, uh, people are saying, you know, I've done my weekly review or I am about to do or whatever. Uh, but I think the sense of embarrassment is not, is not there yet. So I think you're, you're totally right. I should be more transparent with my weekly review exactly. So not just yeah, that I and, did uh, it. And, but... and, and say, I, guys, I don't give a fuck whether you do this or not. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, if you want to play my game, here's how I play that game. And if you're not doing a weekly review, I'm not sure I'm trusting you and making your priority choices right. I'm not sure you're not letting stuff fall to the crack that might need to fall to the crack. So um, if you say you're doing this, <laughs> by the way, I had 
very, very senior person at uh, one of the big uh, global news networks. Mm -hmm. Big champion of my stuff. She had my, <laughs> by the way, she's the kind of person I walked into her office and she had my workflow diagram under her glass on her desk. Wow. <laughs> she said, David, when I'm nuts, you know, this is makes me sane. But what she did was every Friday afternoon, you know, once she cleaned the deck, she said all her emails were zeroed out. She'd done her weekly review. She said, then she sent a note to all of her staff. She said, by the way, uh, my email is zeroed. Now yours isn't. <laughs> I thought that was such fun. You know, <laughs> that, that she made that a, a kind of a game for, with everybody. But I don't know how you could force people to do that. But, I, don't know, I don't know that I ever would. So one of the things we do, uh, actually, I mean, in this vein, this is what we do exactly um, on Fridays, that people who uh, are not doing their weekly review, uh, because, you know, we use Nosby and we share tasks and projects. So they get all the tasks. So, so like, so everyone else has like, you know, the tasks, you know, the activity cleaned up, but then the ones who don't, don't, right? So it is kind of a game. You're right. This is, uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty smart. <laughs> well, come on. You need to enjoy this. It is a game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a game to empty my in basket. It's like, you're like, wow. Uh, sorry. Something just fell over. It's like, sure. Well, let me see. What's that? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do with that? What do I do with that? See, the problem is if you haven't had the game defined, it's hard to play the game. Right. And so defining what the game is like is just a, a critical element to how you make sure those things kind of work. Right. So ultimately, well, you can define the game. You can be playing the game. You can say, "Hey, guys, this is the game to do," and make it kind of lightweight. Don't you know? Don't make it so heavyweight for people. One of the things we practice in in this weekly review also, and and this is and this is the best part. That very often it comes from junior people on our team. It's like they create like that, for example, let's say there is a project, and they see that there's a project, but it's completely abandoned. There are no next actions defined. Like it's just there, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so what they do is they 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 check who created the project. And they create a task for this person, uh, uh, for example, to me, let's say, because, for example, I had this idea, but I just completely, you know, abandoned the project. And there's a task I get from a junior person. Michael, uh, are we closing this project or what? <laughs> and then I'm like, aha, so now I have to decide. And I think this is kind of this gamification thing that, you know, that we are um, kind of challenging each other, you know, to to clean, to, to define the next action or to well, it's create a game, the project. It's, an, it's, a, it's an important game. <clears throat> You know, if if you like football, yeah, a football player, soccer player, to get on the field, what are the two things? Where's the goal? What's the next play? Mm -hmm. Those are the two things that are the drivers of what they do to be successful. And so, also, you know, also, coaching you... that and just making sure people think, great. Where's your goal? What's the next play? Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, I think the, you know, especially the, you know, what's your next play? Because, you know, where, I mean, but of course, if you don't know the goal, the same thing, you, you know, next play can be anywhere or anything. And, and I think this is what I, because um, I, I read your article about, you know, uh, introducing GTD to teams, and we are going to link this in the show notes to this uh, podcast episode. Um, uh, and here, link it also on, uh, on, on YouTube. So um, the... Um, one of the things you said that to, to introduce GTD in teams, the important factor is the ownership so like you like so I, that people have to have their like um tasks or ideas or goals or projects they have to have you know clear owner otherwise they will not be moved forward right well the purpose of a team is to fulfill some purpose for the team yeah so who owns that purpose Mm -hmm. who knows what it is, is the team aware of why they are a team. You wouldn't be a team if there wasn't some reason to be a team. Mm -hmm. So and too many teams <laughs> have either lost the vision of what their purpose was or never even knew what it was to begin with. What's their purpose? And then who owns that? Because who owns that then has to determine a lot of how the team then manages itself in terms of the fulfilling that purpose. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, this kind of explains whenever 
whenever I feel that we are losing focus, it's because either me or somebody from my leadership team hasn't determined like what's what's next and and the why. Yeah, and you can do it either way. You can do well. What's next, and then why are you doing that as next? And then they can back it back up to okay. Well, here's the purpose of what we're trying to accomplish. But you know, being involved in holacracy for the last ten years, I've been very very rigorously trained. And how do you really, really discreetly determine purpose, not only of the team, but the roles in the team and the people playing those roles and what are the purposes of those roles? You know, are they supposed to produce correct numbers on a, on a consistent basis in a timely way? Are they supposed to ensure that feedback from customers has been integrated and recalibrated appropriately? You know, come on. So what's the purpose of the team? You know, and then you've got a senior team and their purpose is going to be to fulfill whatever the company's purpose is, you know, as a team. But then each one of them probably has their own separate roles that then need to be calibrated. So I've, I've you know, for 40 years since I've learned role-based organizational, you know, uh, organization, role-based stuff is great. But in the last 10 years, I've gotten much more discreet about roles, how critical that is because, you know, you and I can like each other, but if we're unclear about what role you have, what role I have, and if they overlap, yeah, you know, we want to shoot each other. You never know. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I remember on on the GTD summit, uh, holocracy was one of the things that uh, was uh, kind of uh, was kind of let's say the secondary theme theme of the conference because there were like there was lots of lots of talking about holocracy and especially I think in 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 the Netherlands it's being widely. Uh, um, yeah, it's pretty popular here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so when after the conference, when I came back to my team, um, I so I read the book and all that stuff, but I was just I didn't know how to like kind of I was you know how to introduce it you know gradually to the team. So I remember that you don't you don't forget it. Uh -huh. You either go all in or forget it. You can't okay. halfway do holacracy. It's either you have to give it up, Michael, and go, look, I will let the self-organized organization make the decisions about the company as opposed to me. As soon as you pull the founder's card, you just, you know, it doesn't work. Uh -huh. As soon as you say, well, you decide that, but here's what I'm going to do. Yeah, forget it. You're not going to have a self-organizing organization. So it takes a, <laughs> a bit of courage. For whoever's the owner, founder, or whoever runs the thing or owns it has to be willing to say, I will give over to the process. And mm -hmm. it's quite a rigorous process. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not a big, I'm not voting that you or anybody else would find this easy. You have to be called to it. Okay. But it's a trend. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, come on, the trend started when Organizations started to flatten. People had to be expected to manage yep. themselves a lot more than whatever. And change was happening faster and faster. And so the requirement for people to be able to manage themselves, you know, you didn't you didn't have a lot of resources to have, you know, senior people hold your hands to figure out what your team should be doing. You need to figure that out yourself. So it's a trend that's not going to stop. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, so I don't, I, I don't know the last statistic that I saw was said something like, you know, I don't know, in the last next 10 years, 80 percent of the U.S. workforce is going to be subcontractors. Yeah. I mean, the, so, for example, uh, on the like, like when we developed the application on the developer side, for example, what we did, uh, we OK, so. You said full on, I say, let's, uh, I say we, we try to do some of it. So some of it means uh, that in that sense, like for example, when we have a new Nosby feature that we want to introduce, right? So uh, we uh, we decide uh, together with the team, who is the feature owner? So who's the person responsible for this feature? And then this person, when they are developing the feature and coordinating the whole thing and the design and all that stuff, they have the last say and they decide what to do. So even though I am the founder and I am the you know the 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 the, the boss, um, I can give suggestions or whatever. But they ultimately decide when the feature is shipped and how the feature looks like. I I have no say in this. I can only give feedback, 
but my feedback is as good as any any other person's feedback on that. So would you say that this is just the beginning of this? A yeah, little bit? yeah, yeah, no, that's the idea. Exactly. So that they, uh, they know that this is their role. As you said, this is their, their role. Where their role is the, to be the leader of this feature, of this part, uh, of this bubble, like it was in the holacracy. And and they have the last say. And they own this. this and this is the process. So uh, Yeah, as long as you don't undermine the process. Mm -hmm. But you there's could. Always, there's always temptation to do that. <laughs> but uh, so, so my experience doing that... Uh, so my challenge doing that was really to remind them that they are the boss in that sense. Because kind of, I don't know, um, so my people are really, you know, as every founder would say, I have the best team. Of course, of course, my people are the best. But what I'm saying is that they are the best, but I think the ingrained kind of, um, the way people were brought up, you know, in the professional world is that they have to still adhere to the hierarchy of the you know of the organization and so it it bears reminding them that you know you're the boss here this is your decision if you say this is if you say this you say this that that this is how we roll and right. i see that we have to keep on reminding them that to be able to make sure that they finally get the message that it's not yeah. really easy but to... no i understand i just signed a contract <laughs> you haven't you haven't done that Okay. So they all know you could pull the plug at any time. That's a difference. And uh -huh. I'm not saying, you know, you're, what you're doing is great, fabulous. And if it works, hey, mm -hmm. good work. I'm just saying, if you really wanted to do this, you'd mm -hmm. have to sign a contract to make sure that you will keep that agreement, that they make that decision. And by the way, in a holacracy framework, you could be given all the power you want to make whatever decisions you want, as long as the organization agrees to that. Right. So, you know, it's a, it's a, Brian, you know, came up with it and he's from another planet. I mean, <laughs> he figured this thing out in detail. How do you create organizational mind like water? Mm -hmm. So uh, he did it. Yeah. So basically, so basically what you're saying is that, uh, but cause, cause what I'm saying is that my concern is that, um, because, uh, uh, uh people are, brought up this way, they are not doing it. You, what you're saying is that, right, but because I haven't signed the contract, so they really have it, like they know, that's why they don't, they are always kind of, they would be second guessing that may make, like not making, not being sure that I might pull the plug. Sure. And by the way, even though I signed the contract, Catherine and I did, it still took three or four years before people didn't want to go, oh, well, yeah, but Dave or Catherine could still do X, Y, and Z. Okay. The company. So it took a while for people to really get that we meant what we said. Because they're, you know, <laughs> they're still going to go to you, Michael. Yeah. I'm sorry. They will. But... And there's nothing wrong with that. They just, mm -hmm. that that's, the way, that's the way that game plays. But if you say, yeah, and, you know, but I have agreed you know, in writing, <laughs> I have agreed in you know, in principle, I've, I've made a commitment that the way we've now structured the organization, it's, it sounds like you may have, you know, individual relationships with these teams and with mm -hmm. the projects, but it's probably not built into the organization. And I'm not saying you should, again, yeah. you need to be, if you want a total buy-in, that makes the whole organization function that way. Otherwise, it's ad hoc in terms of how you're managing that, but sounds mm -hmm. like you're doing well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's like it's like again when we introduced, for example, um, uh, uh, Mighty Fridays. So Mighty Friday is the concept where we introduced in our company that on Fridays we don't do um, uh, uh, you know normal work. We don't do day to day work. Well, on Fridays we do weekly review, and on Fridays we focus on personal development. So you can read stuff, you know, you can read finally the GTD book or I don't know, go through a course or whatever. So Friday is for that, right? Yeah. And still, I see like I I feel like I have to slap people's hands every Friday because they kind of go back to just, ah, I'm gonna just finish this task there. I'm gonna just, you know, finish this thing. It's human nature is bad. Oh no, come on, but the rules are made when brains run out. Mm -hmm. but let people do what they feel like doing and just say here's a big suggestion here's what i'm doing 
any of you guys don't do this, you're going to be kind of behind my cloud. So, you know, your choice. Yeah, well, I'm just trying to figure out is like how to, um, uh, so not only motivate them, but kind of, you know, like, so first I said a good example, but still like kind of um, challenge them, you know, because my, what I'm thinking well, if is if they that... don't know what their priorities are and they can't give you a complete, current and accurate, total up-to-date project list, fire them. <laughs> I, I don't mean to, I, look, I'm 77, a little old and cranky right now, but I, come on, that's the <laughs> truth. You know, you don't have to say, go do GTD, just go, Show me your project list. If they don't have one, go, why the hell not? Mm -hmm. You know, how are you managing your life if you don't have a list of all the commitments at these levels? Yeah, completely. So if uh, CTD is just good business, why would you start a meeting without going, what are we trying to accomplish by when? Mm -hmm. You would why would you end a discussion with us saying, So what's the next action? Who's got it? I mean, this is GTD, it's just outcome and action thinking. You know, and making sure you manage that appropriately in terms of organization and reflection and review. Yeah. To, so, to, you know, that's how you get them to do it is hold people accountable to their business practices. Don't even use the word GTD. Just get it out of your vocabulary. Yeah. But just you know, the thing is that um, it's like with social media that like you know when you uh when you don't know what to do with you because like you're bored or something the first thing you open your phone and you scroll through social media because it's the easiest thing to do it's like the you lean on the easiest thing yeah well sometimes that's a cool thing to do because your brain needs a rest if you've been spending an hour trying to design a spreadsheet and your brain <laughs> your brain is yeah. toast sometimes hey go to social media snack on email if nothing else why not there's nothing wrong with that Doing that as opposed to something, some part of you think you should be doing. Exactly. That's where you're going to run into the problem. Mm -hmm. And that, that's how I feel about these Fridays very often is that, that that people, instead of just figuring out, as you said, figuring out what what they should, you know, what they should do with the, you know, the day that I'm giving them for personal development, they can do whatever they want. Uh, they kind of lean in on the easiest, like, oh, I'm going to just finish the day-to-day the, the, the tasks. I'm going to just still, you know, work. Yeah, I probably would too. <laughs> Yeah. Why would you're you telling I mean... me to grow myself? I'm not ready to grow myself. I'm I'm adult enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm gonna go do this other stuff. So don't well, I don't know. Up to you if you want to take on the preacher role. <laughs> it's not only the preacher role, it's like more um yeah. Maybe. Well, you yeah. might, you might, I don't know if you've communicated, talk, guys, here's why I suggest you do this. Have you written that out really sincerely? Yes, I have, but maybe we should, maybe I should, I have done it like years ago and maybe I should revisit that. How? how yeah, it's, or just it's have done. a meeting again. And guys, here's what I suggest. How are you guys feeling about this? Should I just stop, mm -hmm. you know, pinging you about this kind of stuff? Yeah. You know, I don't annoying. want to be a bother. Exactly. I'm just trying to be an inspiration because it worked for me and whatever. So just be honest and open and you know not push on that michael yeah because you can be a pushy kind of guy <laughs> yes i can but aren't over all overachievers like that until they learn better could be <laughs> yeah yeah you're right mm. well they learn to achieve results through more subtle means mm -hmm. yeah there is still a lot to learn from me. <laughs> so, David, uh, just to wrap it up, uh, um, so tell me how you've been, like as as so so um, as the you know as the as the company is right now uh, in in uh, in holacracy, uh, and you're still running it from Amsterdam, right? So mm -hmm. and. Yeah. How is how is this working? I mean, and then people from our company are all over the world right now, as as, as far as I know. It works right? great. You know, I mean, we shrank from fifty people to five because we became pretty much an IP, uh, you know, mm -hmm. licensing company more than anything else. Mm -hmm. We still have some digital products and GTD Connect, our sort of you know membership online stuff that we do. But for the most part, I'm supporting all of our licensed partners around the world mm -hmm. that are doing what they're doing, and you know we're represented in 90 countries now nice so a lot of what i do is just you know as needed you know little ad hoc things show up called hey can you do this can you do this whatever 
And I'm still now that the pandemic is over. I <laughs> I just did a keynote in Nashville and just been uh, contracted to do another keynote in Virginia, you know, next month. So surprisingly, you know, uh, and my invitation to do my own, you know, personal keynote presentations is still kind of alive and well out there, at least a little bit. So I'm still doing that. So that's a lot of what's going on. I, I can't stop doing GTD. Anybody asked, like you <laughs> yeah. or anybody else, go, hey, you know, come on, it's great stuff. It does nothing but improve people's lives. And again, at age 77, I don't know how many more years I got to crank this out, but, you know, and I thought at some point, Michael, <laughs> you and the, the, you know, 6 million other people who got GTD and they go, okay, now what? <laughs> yeah. go, well, I'm done. I'm done. But they keep coming out from under the rocks. You know, they keep, I've been, I've done 2000 podcasts and interviews since 2001, since I, the first edition of getting things done. So I, and, but they, they every, I, I still do one or two a week. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew, right? And that's why I invited you, because I, I think it all bears repeating and it all bears, you know, uh, and I'm sure there will be lots of listeners of this show to just like, okay, so who is this David Allen? What is this GTD? <laughs> like, they will be like, they, they will see it for the first anybody time. Anybody who's read the book, read it again. It'll be a whole different book. Right. But these are the books I, I keep on coming to, like uh, uh, the GTD book, uh, The Essentialism by Greg McEwen. Uh, like it, there are a few, just very few books that I keep on rereading and keep on reading back, you know, yeah. and keep on. And, and the best part is with every read, I learn something new. So, yeah. Well, you're a new person every time you read it. So you see it through a different lens. So your different lens notices different things in the information. Exactly. Well, David, thank you so much. It's been a blast. So thanks for tuning in and hi, I hope you enjoyed this conversation with David Allen, the author of the book, Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity. Uh, as you know, Getting Things Done, this book was the sole inspiration for me creating Nosby. And uh, Nosby uh, was uh, uh, built in 2007 to help me implement Getting Things Done. Um, uh, I mean, for example, the, the view of priority was initially called next uh, next actions, and uh, the whole idea of con of contexts uh, projects um, it was all born there. Uh, now the new Nosby that we just introduced uh, a few years back, uh, the new Nosby is focused on helping you, not only you get things done, but also the teams get things done together. Because as David said in the conversation, if you don't uh, see other people's project list. And if you don't know uh, their priorities or their next actions, it's hard to say, it's hard to decide what to do and where to go next. That's why uh, with Nosby, we're trying to make GTD more collaborative, but on the other hand, inspire everyone on the team to do their weekly review on Friday, to review their projects, to review their tasks, and to make sure that they've got the priorities straight and they know what's next for them for next week. So that's it. Thank you so much. And till the next No Office podcast. And if you have any questions or you would like to um, uh, uh, give feedback, please uh, sh uh, uh, rate us on, on uh, iTunes, uh, on the podcasts. And also uh, you can comment uh, if you go to nooffice.fm slash 43, as in 43rd episode of the show. Uh, over there, you'll find this uh, episode also as a, video and uh, you will be able to add comments and I'll be happy to respond to these comments so make sure to don't be don't, not be a stranger and uh, let me know what you think and uh, if you have discovered getting things done for the first time make sure to read uh, David's uh, book and if you want to implement GTD use Nosby okay thank you so much and till the next one